Okay, hi, now that you're familiar with some polynomials and tackle some easy to average questions, we shall move on to more of the more difficult ones. To some of the more difficult ones. Okay, we are given this polynomial of the third degree x3 plus ax squared plus B, bx plus c. Okay, and we are given this wealth of information, okay, and then they want us to find the value of b. Okay, so I look at it and we are really need to deduce the information that we have to find. B, which I'm assuming we also need to find A and C in the process. And this is where you have to be fairly familiar with your zero coefficient relationship because if you don't know that, you cannot piece the individual information together. Okay? Some of them bear the relationship, the zero dash coefficient relationship, some doesn't. So, without ado, let's just head straight on. Okay, we are given that the average of its roots. The sum of the coefficients, okay, and the product of its roots are all equal together. Okay, average of roots is equal to sum of coefficient and is equals to product of roots. Okay, this is what we got. And on top of that, we have the y-intercept, which they which this is to illustrate, sorry, this is uh, x3, right? So x3 will go like that, okay? And we are given the y-intercept, which is 2 over here. y equals to px. So we got the y-intercept. Now, that seems to be a lot of information, but how we use the information that we have to solve the question may be a problem if you are not familiar with the techniques. Okay, we want to find b. b is our ultimate goal. So when I look at this, Okay, it would seem to me that I, this is the last one I want to use. Why? Because some of the coefficients we know would be 1 plus a plus b plus c. Okay, now why do I want to refrain from that? Because I need to find a and c first, which is going to be a problem. Or more, more um, accurately speaking, a and c will be found by using the, the other equations first. Okay, but let's see what we got. Now, how about we try this one over here? What do we know about the y-intercept? The y-intercept occurs, as always, when x is equal to 0, right? So we put x equals to 0 over here, p0 is equals to 0, 0, 0, c, okay? And what do we know about c is equals to 2? Well, that's a quick one, okay? So now we know the value of 2 using that. So I guess one should be quite familiar with that the y-intercept always occurs when x equals to zero. That is good because we can put a zero inside here and eliminate the x terms. Okay, so now we know that c is two over here. And following suit, let's use this one and this one. And this is where you have to be very, very familiar with your zero dash coefficient relationship because if you don't know, you're gonna you're gonna break down right here. Okay, so average of the roots. So what do we know about average of the roots? It's the sum of the roots divided by 3. What do we know about the sum of the roots? The sum of the roots would be received over here, the A term. But is it positive and negative? Well, it is negative. Why? Because you always start with negative first. Always keep in mind in that, okay? We always start with negative, change to positive, and then back to negative. So negative A is going to be equal to the sum of the roots. Sorry, ne so negative a is the, the sum of the roots here, okay? And the average of the roots is divided by 3 because we got 3 over there, 3 roots because it's to the third degree. And this is equal to the product of the roots, okay? So what do we know about the product of the roots? The product of the roots will be received from this number over here, okay? However, it will be negative, okay? Which is minus plus minus, so minus c, okay? So this is equals to minus c, which is minus two, and then a is equal to six. Simple enough, okay? Just to recap, what I, all, I always like to remember, or this is how I remember, so I can tell it to you, if you want to remember it this way, by all means. We always add up, so let's just say it'll be r1 add up with r2 add up with r3. And then this, this roots, okay, would be negative of that, okay? The next one is not 1, but it is 2. So it's R1 times R2. And then you do it accordingly. 
R1 times R2 add up with R1 times R3 add up with R2 times R3. That would give us B. And then after that, it would be 3. So it would be R1, R2, R3. Okay, this is how I like to remember it. Okay, R1, R2, and this one is R1 times R3. Okay, and then you always sum up them individually. Well, because for this one, if we times R1, R2, and R3, there's nothing to sum up with. That's why we leave it over like that. Okay, so it's always 1, then you always take 2 numbers and times, you take 3 numbers and times, ne negative, positive, negative, so on and so forth. Okay, so A is equal to 6. Then lastly, we know that also this is equal to the, the, the coefficient of the roots is also equal to this. So what you can do is that you can take some of the coefficients, 1 plus A plus B plus C equals to this, which is product of the roots would be this one minus that, so it's minus 2. This is the product of the roots, it equals to minus C, so it equals to minus 2. Sub in the values, 1 plus 6 plus B and C is plus 2, equals to minus 2, and the answer would be 7 minus 4, the answer would be 3. Minus 3, right? Minus 3, yeah. Sorry, the answer would be minus 4, minus 7, minus 11. And there we go, that's how we find the answer, okay? Again, I would like to re-emphasize that you have to be very clear with your roots coefficient relationship. When they mention roots here, and when they mention roots here, that's when you apply this, okay? But when they mention some of the coefficients, this does not apply because you're just simply taking the coefficients 1, A, B, and C. So be very clear about that and you should be able to be on your way to solve some of the more difficult questions.